Hi, my name is Perry Cooper and I'm a 3D and motion graphics designer working in the advertising industry and posting animations regularly to Instagram. In this series I'm going to show you how to create this fun looping factory scene from start to finish using Cinema 4D R20, Octane Render 2020 and After Effects 4 Post. In this video we'll set up the tipping truck and conveyor animation using the Expresso and IK rigs we built previously. We'll then create the looping liquid animation in the central tube using MoGraph along with final foreground and background elements. Let's get started. Okay, so let's start off with a conveyor belt. We're gonna use this controller that we use to um, animate it around, but I actually wanna start at 100 and then we're gonna move backwards because I wanna have it so that uh, this truck like dumps all of the um, spheres into here and then it goes off screen and that means we can get it off screen in time to be able to loop back to frame zero. So let's start off on frame zero with our position set to 100 and we'll set a keyframe. Then I'm going to move along to frame 100 and the position I'm going to say 87.5. Now um, I got to this position because I'm basically I'm trying to um, get an equal amount of like movement so that it's not kind of ramping up too much or um, along too much so we can kind of get to this point pause for a little while then get this one off screen without the um, conveyor belt going super far so I'm gonna keep it on here for like 50 frames to like frame 150 and set another keyframe and then from frame 150 to 250 so you see we've got like 100 frames here which is what we're going from 100 to 87.5 so it's like 12 and a half we're sticking with that and then we're going 12 and a half percent again I think yes to 75 so we've got kind of an equal amount of motion on this side and this side so it all kind of remains even and we and that means we get this one here that one will nearly get off screen but what we'll do is we'll duplicate the particles so that they'll actually be removed at the beginning of the next loop so that's something that we'll set up so all right with that being done let's uh, go to our dope sheet and we've got this kind of easing in and easing out so our a conveyor belt kind of slows down at the end and slow and speeds up at the beginning which we don't want so let's just select all the frames I'm going to click here on the ease in ease out just so we can amend these and at the beginning so you've got this minus 25 which is kind of the length of this bezier arm we're just going to set that to zero so we've got a linear keyframe and then on this side we're going to set that to zero as well so basically when we by the time we get to this point it's moving at a constant speed and then here in the middle I might up this to like minus 20 on both of these just so we've got a bit more of a kind of easing into position so if we play this you'll see it just kind of slows down now it looked like it ramped up there but I think that's basically because it's trying to calculate all the other things that are going on so if I were to just delete these two trucks and we just play through you see we've got like a nice smooth movement it's just because it's trying to calculate everything all right to start making this uh, liquid go up the tube rather than doing an actual liquid simulation we're going to use some meta balls and a cloner to kind of fake because it's kind of in the background that the liquid here we need it to kind of come out and interact with the truck but for this one we just want it kind of a constant animation so what i'm going to do is uh, go to our tube and we've got this tube spline so this is what we're going to use to run our MoGraph along so if we create a cloner I'm going to stick this in the tube so we can kind of keep kind of all of our sections together and I'm going to call this one uh, liquid and I'm going to bring in a sphere add that underneath and I'll make this about 65 in size and for object I'm going to run select object under the mode and our object is going to be our tube spline so we know that's running up the middle now to make a constant animation we could either run an offset or you can just change the rate here so if I just put this like to say 10% you see we get kind of 10% motion and I think that yeah let's see that will loop around now I actually want this liquid to go up so maybe it's tying in with this so maybe like we've got liquid going up here and then it come and then something happens above here and then it gets squeezed out of the pipe so I'm just going to change the rate to minus 10 
So now we have it running up the pipe, um, but we're going to need a lot more um, particles. So let's just move this up to 100. And I'm going to go MoGraph effect uh, random to add some randomness to this. Now I don't want to kind of change the position at all. I'm going to leave that as it is. Uh, I just want to change the scale. So now we've got kind of a random amount of, uh, of sizes mixed in. And I'm going to add this into our effectors here. So I'm going to call this um, uh, tube, I call it, yeah, tube liquid random. I can keep track of that. And then I also want to get some kind of random motion up along the tube. So uh, the way I'm going to do that is go on to the liquid again. And I'm actually going to go MoGraph effectors, and we're going to add a shader effector. And again, I'm just going to copy the naming here so we can keep everything together. So this is going to be our, oh, I'll duplicate it. This will be our shader. And what I'm going to do on the shading parameter is not the scale, but actually the position and the Z position. This is going to kind of like move it along the length of the, of the line. So we're just going to get some random up and down movement. So to be able to get that movement, we need to add some shading in. So let's go to the shading tab and I'm going to add a, not gradient, I'm going to add some noise. We're just going to keep with the generic noise, but I'm going to up the scale to like 1000. And then maybe we'll up the contrast a bit, maybe like 50%. Now, if we have a look, you see now we've got some kind of random one shooting up. So we've got this kind of random movement going on right now. We want to kind of bring these all together so they look like a, some sort of liquid mass. Uh, so to do that, I think I'll hold down all and then we'll select the meta ball. So now they see they're within the meta ball. Now I want to change this uh, the editor and the render subdivision. So I want to make the edit a subdivision the same just so I can kind of make sure that it all looks the same and then I'm going to change this whole value I think if I up this here we go and then we can change that editor value again down to 40 that's just uh, you know so it will render at a smoother amount than we're actually viewing so you see now we're getting this kind of like this liquid kind of moving up I might up that whole value or lower it I say Maybe like 150. See what that looks like. I think actually maybe 200. I kind of like it. So we kind of get this, these little bits kind of shooting up. Maybe I will uh, go to our effectors and under our liquid shader, I might change the contrast here so it's not as sudden. Yeah, so now see we're getting kind of we're still getting that random movement, but you know, it's um not as ridiculous. So that is our kind of liquid moving up. And if I go back to the tube, you know, we can always maybe we'll just put this to ten and ten. Maybe that will be enough. It's obviously slowing everything down a little, but yeah, we're getting that liquid. Right, so let's save that. Now this other conveyor belt, I want to kind of get that moving, but I just want it to be a constant motion. So I'm going to do something similar to what I've done on the liquid here. I get the conveyor top, and I'm just going to maybe set the rate here to like 10%. And let's just press play. See what that looks like. Let's see, we've already see we've got that constant motion. We've got something else going on, and it's looping correctly. The only other thing I want to do is we haven't got these rollers rotating. So to get a constant motion on those, I'm just going to select the rollers and go MoGraph Effector. I'm going to select the Time Effector. And I'll stick that in here. And I'll say, uh, I'll call this Empty Rollers Time. And we want to change the parameter. So we do want rotation, but we don't want that. We want, no, we don't want that one. It's always the last one, this one. Let's make sure, see how, which direction. So you have got a constant rotation going on, but I don't think it's quick enough. So let's maybe make this up like 180. There we go. So we've got that moving. 
And maybe this is actually moving a bit fast. So let's go to the conveyor top and we'll change the rate to maybe like 5%. Oh, and it was going so quickly, it was going the wrong way. So it's actually going that way. So let's change that to minus 5%. I think it was moving so fast. I think actually the rollers need to change to a faster speed. So that maybe let's make this like 360. So this is just like per second. So per second it's making a 360 degree rotation. So we've got a 10 second loop, so it's gonna um it's gonna loop correctly. So now we've got this constant uh, animation on. Our traffic lights will be um done in our materials. That's how we'll animate those. Okay, so let's build this uh, truck. I'll duplicate our uh, one of our original trucks, and I'm just going to rename this truck bridge. Um, I'll bring it down. And if I go into the dope sheet, uh, I want to delete all the keyframes for the truck bridge, and also that's reset this. So I just want to set that back to zero. And what I want to do is just bring this up into position and rotate it. So we'll probably rotate this through minus 180. And then we want to kind of set it on the bridge. So let's actually go into a side view. This is the bridge surface here. So I'm going to bring him up and then center him in the tunnel. And then I'm going to, let's look at his final position. Let's go here. I want to set him kind of not too close to the edge because if he's too close to the edge when the when the spheres fall out they might actually overshoot so I kind of want to have it here I'm kind of guesstimating so I'll set it up and then we might need to tweak it so let's just set that as his final position I'm actually going to have that on frame 100 so go to the coordinates and I'm going to set a keyframe here is because we're moving the Z position actually that's something else we need to change so now we're moving in Z rather than X again we need to make sure that um, our axles are change are moving through Z rather than X because we're in 180 and we're also in minus 180 so we need to make a slight adjustment so let's um change this to Z because we set that up before we had the X and the Z it's Z for both and the only other issue we might have is because it's minus, see they're in a reverse direction. So we go to the range mapper, we can just change this to plus 90 rather than minus 90. So I'll just change that for both of those. And now if we move him, yeah, he's moving correctly. So that's our first position or second position. Our first position, I'm going to set this maybe five frames in just so um, I give our particles a our, our spheres a chance to kind of settle down. Um, I'm going to set this at like 2,900 and set a keyframe, and that's just kind of at the end of the tunnel, basically. So just so he's out of sight. So he's going to come into position. He's going to tip up, and then he's going to leave. So at about 150. I'm going to set another keyframe. And then at 250, go back to 2,900. So if there are any shadows or anything inside the tunnel, they're going to match up at the beginning and at the end because we're in the same position. So let's just have a look at that. It comes in. Now what I want to do is have the back tip up, but I kind of want the back to kind of tip up, start tipping up, tipping up as he stops because if it tips up and then he stops, it could end up just catapulting everything across the scene. We want it to kind of have some sort of controlled element to it. So what I think I'll do is go to another view. And we want to kind of make this uh, back tip up. So I'm going to go to the flatbed zero that we created with this wrist goal here, which is we use to animate or move this. I'm going to go to maybe frame like 95. So just before he stops, and I'm going to set a keyframe in the Z position. Then I'm going to go to frame, I don't know, let's say frame 130. And then I'm going to move this kind of over here into its final position, set a keyframe. Now we've got that going on. So we want 
that tipping up and then we also want the door opening so I'll just on frame 95 still I'll go into the container go to the door and then I think it's through P we set a keyframe and then maybe we'll select 130 again and we'll change this to something like look maybe like 140 so it's opened quite wide so it allows all of our particles to fall out then we've got a nice kind of movement going on. What I'll do is I'll go into our dope sheet and have a look under our truck bridge. So we've got a door and our wrist goal. We've got the Z position and our rotation. Now I'm just going to select all of these points, set them as kind of easy in and out. And if I select this key, then I can kind of adjust the, the time here. So this is about the amount of time it takes to ease in and out. I'm just going to up that to like minus 12. So we have kind of these longer Bezier handles. So it's a little bit smoother. And I might also change that for his position here. So just select all these keyframes. Let that easy in and out and see what it's set to at the moment. Like minus 16. Maybe I'll make this like... Minus 25. It comes to a slower stop. I want to kind of avoid um, a, a catapult scenario so that um, our, our, uh, all our spheres kind of drop in. Right, nice. So that's kind of a nice smooth movement. I want to make sure this closes, obviously, otherwise we've got an accident going on. So let's go back to our dope sheet and Uh, our keyframes here, if we select both of them, you see we've got this controller here, we can move them around with. Now if we um, select them and hold down control and then drag, it makes a copy. Um, I'll, what I'll do is flip these keyframes. So now um, these two are the same and this is back to uh, the original position. I'm going to set this. Here's our conveyor controller. So the conveyor belt is starting to move again here and so is our truck. I'll have it so... You know, just before it starts moving, it starts closing. And what I might actually do is just offset the door like five frames, then everything isn't like moving at the same time. Let's just press play, see what that looks like. It's going to tip up, and then the door will start opening afterwards. And then we're going to close, and it's closed before we go into the tunnel. All right. Okay, before I get into showing you how to do the final truck, I just want to note that um, I did this slightly out of order. So you'll see the uh, truck on the bridge has the spheres coming out the back. Um, we're not going to cover that in this tutorial. That will be in the next episode. But with that, let's get on with animating the third truck. So for this final truck that I'm going to set up, let's um, go into a, a top view. And... Um, I'm going to grab in our tube, we have this tube spline. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to see if I can use this as a kind of route for our truck. So I'm just going to say minus 90. And this is going to be our, our truck is going to kind of come through here and go through the scene. So I'm going to duplicate another truck. I'm going to duplicate truck one again. And I'm going to call this uh, truck. Uh, I'm going to call it truck free. Okay, put it down the bottom, and let's go into our dope sheet, and then truck free. We'll delete that. Let's reset that. Uh, so this guy, we're going to do something slightly different with the wheels and the way that he moves. So let's bring this down and group these together. All this truck free motion. So this is his route. And let's bring this down. So what I want to do is align him to this spline. So let's uh, get him, go tags. Cinema 4 DK tag on align to spline, and then our spline is going to be that tube spline. We'll call this truck route. Now we see that he's not aligned correctly. 
So there's a couple of things we can do. We can make it tangential. But it's still not correct. So we delete these fields. We don't need those. I'm just going to group all of these objects. And then I'm going to rotate him in here. Minus 180. And then the wheel is going to have to do it in a slightly different way. So let's go to our front axle. We're going to delete both of these. And then we're going to animate our guy kind of driving through the scene. So let's go to frame zero. And on position, we'll set a keyframe. I'm going to go to frame 250. And we'll say 100. Is there another keyframe? Oh. another keyframe so now he is constantly driving through the scene now we go to the dope sheet um i want to get uh where his truck aligned to spline here i'm gonna rename that because say free we can see it in here and I'm going to just make these points linear because we just want him kind of coming in and out of the scene. So play back. Now we should be able to see him coming in. Yeah, and he's moving correctly. He's going out of the scene. I just want to make sure that the floor is in the correct place. So where's our floor? Our floor is there. So we need to bring him down. So we'll bring him down by bringing the root down. So let's just grab this and move this down and just make sure that no. Throw up a little bit. That'll do. Now his tires aren't moving. Now we don't see him in the shot, but we might do another camera angle. So we want to make sure that his tires are actually moving. So let's kind of zoom in and let's maybe delete this wall, this bridge wall. And let's just have a look at his tires. Go back to the first frame. Press play. You see nothing's happening. So what we just want to kind of set um, another uh, object to be the uh, driver of this. So let's go to the truck free, and actually want our driver to be this position. So I'm going to go here, expressions, set driver. Then I'm going to go into our truck. Go to our wheel. Yep, and then we're going to go uh, wheel of uh, coordinates under, is it, is it P? Yeah, yeah, under P. Let's just set that to zero. And we'll say expressions set driven relative. Now, it's moving, it's moving very slowly. So let's change this. Let's go here to our range mapper. And... I'm going to change the upper limit here. It's currently set to 360. I'm going to change this to 0 and 100. It's moving very slowly. Let's change this to like 720. It's moving super slow. Um, let's make this something like a 2000. Yeah, that looks good to me. 1,500, and I'm going to duplicate that and put that on this wheel as well. Now all our wheels are moving, and he should that should then see he moves correctly around the corner. Cool. I mean, we just see him. It's just kind of a bit of additional animation in the background. So let's go to our front scene and our bridge wall back on. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. In the next video, we'll set up the MoGraph Dynamic Spheres and X Particles Liquid Simulation. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and stay tuned for new videos.